Honestly, guys, <laughs> what, are <we laughs> what, doing? Is, what are we doing here? <laughs> Ping pong? <laughs> Ping pong? <laughs> what is this? Come on. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. What's hey, up? guys. Yeah. Welcome to the Flat Earth Fever Formula One podcast. We're back. That's what, what, that's what this is. That's what we do. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, hey, this mm-hmm. is episode 60. Thank you for everybody that's uh, stuck around. And if you're new, welcome. <laughs> um, so we begin today with, uh, with the obvious, like we like we stated, the Grand, uh, Spanish Grand Prix. Jesus, what just happened this past yeah. weekend? But before yep. we go into that, uh, I just want to say uh, thanks to everybody that showed up again, once again to Betty's. Uh, shout out to everybody. I know that it, it was a big ask because of the uh, of the Raptors game, Game Seven. Uh, we we played it at the same time. Bas- I know, but basketball. Yes, but exactly. Hardcore fans still showed up. We still had like a pretty good turnout. Thank you again. Uh, it was good to see everybody out in force, and we will see you again for you know in the not not this weekend, next weekend for the Monaco Grand Prix. We're doing it again at 3 p.m. Uh, same time as uh, Barcelona. This time. I'm sure we'll see a, a few more people in the crowd. Um, Especially because it's Monaco. Exactly. Yeah. Should be pretty good. Should be pretty good. Now, I mean, geez, Danny. Take, yes. Take take it away. What what just happened? Now st- oh, I'm still trying to tweet this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what, what happened, man. Okay. The start of the race was crazy. Yes. Considering the tradition of... This year, 2016, <laughs> every race has to start crazy, of course. Yeah. First or second or third corner. <laughs> it's been amazing. I mean, it's we've... been ridiculous. Un- unpredictable. So this is my second season of Formula One. Tell us your thoughts. Uh, and f- vastly more exciting. And really only because there have been more crashes. There have been a few. Almost been... every first turn, every first or second or third turn, there's yeah. always... <laughs> Someone running into someone else, or... but you know what's interesting about that that I find is that if that if that had been happening any other year or or pretty much um, like in years past we've seen it that like the first few races it just started with a bunch of crashes and not a lot of people were excited about it because they were saying that what that meant is that we had too much too many pay drivers too many too much um, lack of talent, lack of up, talent and, up and, and down experience. the grid. Now it's I think and I think maturity. the problem is the opposite. We have quite, like one of the strongest <laughs> F1 fields we've seen in a quite a long in time. In a long time, decades. Like, the maybe the only like person that I'd say that you could write could rightfully say that don't deserve to be in F1 or like you know don't have enough talent for the seat is maybe Rio Harianto. Harianto yeah. But from anybody from Verline up at the top, we got champions, man. We got multiple world champions. We got a, a Mercedes fucking playing Rochambeau. <laughs> and check, the, check this out. What you were just saying about um, excitement and whatnot. This season is averaging so far the most overtakes of any of mm-hmm. all time. We're at 73 average. Mm-hmm. The Chinese race was uh, 160 something. 161, 162. It's ridiculous. It's craziness. And Somebody's it's count like, was like made. I think they put it up to like 170 or something. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the, 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 more than any other race by far, and over so far more than any other reason, uh, season on average. There's all this talk. Like we spent some time last week going over the 2017 changes and all this, and the drivers and some of the stakeholders and people are complaining that this is gonna make overtaking harder. It's going to be more difficult. This is not what we want to see. I think maybe they need to make overtaking more difficult. <laughs> it's gotten a little crazy, no? A 73 average, 161 in China, close to 100 Jesus, this past weekend. Da- Danny, but this is what we wanted to see. This is what the, well, apparently, this is what the fans uh, were calling for. I, is it getting ridiculous? Like, I, are too many of... But can you rightfully say that too many of those overtake maneuvers have been artificially created? Because as no. far as I could tell, I mean, even though there were a lot of DRS passes, the, there were still plenty that weren't, that were spectacular to see. These these numbers I just quoted, I'm, I'm going to make clear, I don't know for sure if they include pit lane overtakes or not. 
True. But I think they do. Okay. I think yes, they do. They but do. still, but still. Yeah. You know, you got to find your window. If you don't want to get overtaken in the pits, you find your window and you do it then. It's, there's no excuse either way. But maybe the overtaking needs to be more difficult. We see some stronger fights, you know, like not just like. And well, we'll see. But it's going to be more difficult. But and engines are going to be evened out next year. These are. I think we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead now. of ourselves for the show today. Yeah. But let's. We'll get back to that in a bit, but for now, I'm just cut, uh, yeah. Well, anyways, Mike brought up his impression of being a new fan. You know, it's incredible. All time, I, ju- I just wanted to like yeah. emphasize that all time this is the most exciting it can it can get. More or less. well, maybe not exciting, but as far as passing, I was um, I was checking uh, this stat in Google Trends uh, f- uh, for this past week. Yeah. Uh, global Formula One searches went up 189 percent. And now, how silly, how silly must Fernando Alonso be feeling right now? Remember when he was like, "Oh, F1 doesn't need a hero." Like, <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> what do you think's going on in the movie theaters? Have you seen the commercial lineup lately? Why? Everything is Marvel, Capcom, DC, comic books. What does this have to do with the race? Heroes. <laughs> Everybody needs heroes. That's what. That's what the teens are about. The twenty teens. For sure. Exactly. <laughs> no, and and and. Everybody's like, oh, yeah. Just, uh, Verstappen is like, creating all kinds of sensational uh, yeah. shit going on in, in, in his home country and I think a lot of people have, have really like he's brought a lot of attention to the sport let's let's make no mistake about his that superhero name is Max Unverstappable now <laughs> <laughs> it's printed across his shoulders. Uh, apparently, apparently, this is we we have visual confirmation of this. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Seen him flying it around at night. But okay, so let's I guess let's go to Max Verstappen in a minute because uh, I want to talk first about basically like what made the raise for me from the very beginning was yeah. that crash. Get those two guys out of the way like they got they themselves were. out of the way. <laughs> I was thinking, man, I swear, in the back of my, my, my head, I was like, I bet, like, this is going to happen. In one, like, in a situation like this, the Mercedes are going to take each other out. And they did. And they did, man. And they did in an accident that would have made Senna and Prost proud. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And, uh, like I said right away, Sky got their opening credits for next year. Yeah. Three in a row, the, the two of them touching each other. <laughs> oh, definitely game on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wheel to wheel contact. He's pushed him on the grass. Uh, it's going to be some shit like that with a 3D, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. A whooshing zoom, zoom in. What do you got? Mike, uh, that, that, uh, that last, <laughs> that second to last link there, that's a. Uh, uh, it says Rochambeau. The Rochambeau. <laughs> the Ross uh, Ham Boom. Yeah. Just uh, th- this is what. Um, oh yeah, I read this. this yeah. Morning. The, the, uh, this is the steward's decision, basically, uh, about the collision, and it's it's actually pretty interesting to read. But they basically said at the very at, at the very end of it that um, we're giving like they're they're. They're gonna take no further action, basically, because not because nobody was at fault, but because they were both at fault. <laughs> they were both at fault. Hamilton yeah. uh, apparently Hamilton took the blame this morning or yesterday afternoon. Listen, it it is tough, and I and I can see like um, uh, both sides of the argument. I was talking to my uh, my boss. He, he's uh, he's into a fun, and like, he was texting me yesterday, and like, hey, what did you think? Blah blah. blah. And, like he. He was surprised when I when I told him like listen at the very beginning I thought it was Lewis uh, I thought it was Lewis's fault I thought I thought just from looking at it quite uh, at the first glance I thought it was Lewis's fault but then like after they showed the onboard like no. you could you could see that like it was it was a bit of both it was like they both like had some shit going on that if the other one hadn't been doing like something else too aggressive or too um or you know like they, then it would have been no. a definite like Hamilton had that gap more Rosberg's fault a little bit. Yeah, but one thing that Anthony Davidson said um, was that listen, like it's sometimes when you're when you're trying to make a move, sometimes the most, you have to back out. Well, the the responsibility I don't, I don't of like whether or not like you're gonna like you're gonna result in a tricky situation is is of the guy that's attempting the move, not the guy in front, because the guy behind can see more. Um, and 
Hamilton should have been able to see that Rosberg was harvesting and that his braking was going to be unpredictable or at least not 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 normal not as usual so mm -hmm. it's it's a bit of both I don't know what do you think from what you saw it Mike uh well I think I think people almost sort of forget how fast that happened true right i mean these are like <laughs> seconds you have to sort of make a decision right away and yeah. obviously these are trained quote-unquote pilots uh which i always think is a hilarious word to call these guys but but they are right i mean you can call them drivers too uh, yeah we, i'm gonna call them drivers from now on uh, <laughs> it's like the spanish and the italians call them pilots a lot um but i i I, I tend to sort of side with Lewis on this one. I, I was really kind of surprised at how fast judgments were being thrown out. Uh, like like Nicky Lauda, right? Like he's just like, no, it was Lewis', Lewis fault uh, or however he, he speaks. <laughs> um, and my gut reaction when it first happened, I was like, I don't know, man. Like this doesn't seem like it was just one person's fault. People are quick to throw the blame though. That's right. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that makes for, like, really entertaining highlights, right? It's like, oh, yeah. Nicky Lauda said it's Lewis Hamilton's fault. Yeah. And like, I, and, like, I think it was you or Danny that were that were saying, like, I thought they were buddies. Like, I thought, like, <laughs> I thought Nicky Lauda just loved Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> Apparently not. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's Nicky Lauda. You yeah. know, it's, uh, <laughs> they both have private jets. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> they are in the jet set. In the jet set. <laughs> Uh, but no, it, it, it was an interesting crash. I mean, at the end of the day, like that's it, it seems like mo the both of them were like, you know what, we we're just gonna go with what uh, with what the stewards said, and like we're just gonna move on. Mm -hmm. And that was that was good to see. Like, because like, before, like it was getting it was getting annoying. Like after every every one of like their silly crashes, they both like were either trying to blame each other or one like fully took the blame and like then was maybe stopping short of tears. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but but it doesn't take away from the fact that this was Mercedes like double non point score first ever like so yeah since they came since back to six, the sixty two races yeah sixty two races straight since they came back Mercedes have scored points in every race at least one car's finished yeah every wow. sixty two races in a row now something else that sort of came out of this yeah. uh, out of these out of this headline at least yeah it. The crash sort of gave an, a, another platform for the Rosberg Hamilton trade or movement thing. Not to jump ship on what we were talking about, but yeah. it did sort of have a hand in being like, "Oh, maybe we should separate these drivers." Yeah, maybe right? this this relationship has reached its point of maturity. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say because they're both clearly very competent drivers. Yeah. Uh, and the, both their egos are too big to really fit yeah. in one room. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I thought it was really interesting. Think uh, about that though: sixty-two races of points. This is, we just said at the off the top. This is our sixtieth podcast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I've been sick once or twice. We had to bail yesterday. I've been on vacation one or two times. You've been away. You yeah. got sick. Like we, and then you've been away one or two times. You had yeah. your, your band stuff. Yeah. You got sick. We we got some of those done together. We got points uh, points on some. Like we did it like <laughs> with half the team, but like f that's really impressive when you put it in in those terms. Well, and impressive like, in terms we're, of we're doing this as a hobby. You know what I mean? Like we hang out once a week and talk about racing. Right? Yeah, you imagine guys we got paid show up and do this <laughs> seven days a week, sit ups and torture chambers and sh neck chambers and shit. Holy fuck. It, races in a row. It's a and, it, and it's a testament to their reliability and uh, um, streams, streams okay. fucked. not the Sorry, best please. not the best weekend ever but Bottas and Massa the only two drivers this season so Wait, far too to are, we still, every, are we still on though yeah we're still live oh okay but sorry to, sorry to our live listeners you guys the uh, the not live listeners uh, will be getting the yeah. the good quality I don't know sorry to fucking about, YouTube man. Geez, man. I guess it's uh anyways Bottas and Massa the only two drivers speaking of reliability the only two drivers this season both scored points every race really so far yeah they're the only two guys and the Williams both on the same team the Williams yeah yeah the Williams they fucked, you know, Massa had uh some tra he qualified like 11th or 12th right the team uh messed up his strategy sent him out in traffic but he pulled it out 
<laughs> hey, so it, sorry. One, one, one quick thing though, because <laughs> I just wanna. It might be one point or something, but they it, did it. The last thing that I have, like on the on the Rosberg and and, and Hamilton thing, is that. Yep. Sorry, I thought you. Were okay, they should just do that every time. Come on. <laughs> that was do you terrible. remember how the room lit up? Okay, when we were at Betty's watching with everybody, like as soon as ev- like when we saw that accident, everybody was like, "Yeah, what?" Like, like the the room erupted because. <laughs> Because that was everybody knew that once those two were out, yeah, they, they, we, we were gonna have a race. Right, we were gonna right. have yeah, exactly. a freaking race, yeah. and that's what we got. Like, so uh, something I was thinking about, and I wasn't quite understanding how it worked, was yeah. uh, in this race. They, they were saying it's hard to overtake in this race mm-hmm. uh, in in, uh, in this circuit. No, why? Yeah. Why was that? The, the corners, long corners, the corners. Yeah. long fast corners. Yeah. Okay. When you have those long fast corners, yeah. um. The I guess the option the options for the best racing line or or a racing line that that's gonna be the fastest by a, by far mm-hmm. are very limited. So everybody's gonna try to be taking those, and if you step right. outside of that line too much, then um, then you lose too much time. Mm, that's okay. the nature of those corners. Now, conversely, like what what drivers like and what what produces a lot of overtaking is like this the the quicker like sharper Hair, like hairpins yeah like, okay short quick i mean short tight corners because okay. because those allow You're, the driver a lot more wiggle room as opposed to like how they can place the car in and out and there's there's just like a lot more lines that you can take without losing too much time oh okay you yeah. can try okay. to overtake the other guy under braking like you just break later break harder than him and then hopefully getting out of the corner as well as well if you can get on the throttle quicker mm-hmm. you can get out Medi- Although, medium I'll... corners sort of in the middle like you can try to beat them out of it and the fast corners they're more it's more level playing field i think okay just harder okay yeah yeah more, there's more. A, more of a tight line that you have to take to get the max speed out of that corner and you mm-hmm. just go single file and yeah. it's now this there's is only really two tight corners in that track the it, things like elevation and camber uh or it, the of, of of the track like really like if it's off camber or on camber um mm-hmm. it, it really really helps to like switch this out a lot so they're not but by any means like like 100 percent like all everything obeys at all the corners there are some sweet like really fast corners that you can overtake at but there th- those are those are why like i guess like a lot of people like those like that's why people like the like just those corners that were maybe a bit too fast and too and too wide that scared you <laughs> Yeah, a lot of them have been paved over or turned into yeah. chicanes and stuff like that. But there's there's a lot of tracks just in the season that some of them are for high speed, some of them are for low speed, and some of them are for balance where you need... You'll see, like, the Red Bulls beating everybody, the high speed ones. You'll see, like, the Mercedes and the... I don't know, the maybe Toro Rosso, the, the higher speed teams. And then these are not bad tracks, though. Yeah. Um, these... these, these these tracks that don't often produce a lot of overtaking it's they're so because it, it, they can be highly technical it's testing the yeah, driver they're more physical yeah they're more g-force like this like this past track that just happened require a lot of more concentration so then the game is you know you're that, that's when it like the whole like uh chess game aspect of, of formula one comes right, into play right and like your mental concentration your mental ability to not fuck it up just keep just you know keep going keep going keep going keep going don't get or for the coming years getting rid of some of the super complicated uh sorry which one aerodynamics the very top one wing art highlighted the mclaren wing art this is according to ted anyways it might not be highlighted but oh yeah, yeah. Acor- according to ted this but, is the most <laughs> the most complicated wing that's been brought to the circuit and if you look at it man just look at that what? look at so many veins uh, across and... the top and the right side the adjustments those those hooks that are yeah connecting the lower elements to the higher ones these things here these metal things to like there's about a dozen elements on, on that wing it's it's but even absolutely even crazy. at the termination here look look at that look at that look at that bit of carbon fiber how it splits like in a y here that's nuts. And that's oh, yeah. right there too. Oh yeah, at the, at the back. Jesus yeah. Christ, that's insane. Curls at the end too. The curl there. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, it's incredible. 
Looks so, like uh, Frankenstein. McLaren yeah, brought this in. I, it, these Jensen things are not necessarily gray looking. Like I mean, it's it is a bit of a what's going on there, right? And Jensen didn't really perform too much better than Alonso with this. He did finish the race, but yeah. you know, Alonso, Alonso got knocked out of the race because of some kind of computer problem. Yeah, they said the engine is still fine. <laughs> this engine is not damaged. It looked it, it looked like it could it could have been electronics, honestly, just from from looking at how. That's what, that's what they said. Out. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. come back with that same same engine and reuse it. True, true. But that wing didn't help them out as cra as crazy as it looks. But I'm sure it didn't help out the people following them <laughs> either. <laughs> just the whole point. Just add some, throw up some vortices. Screw up the air for the next person. Yeah. <laughs> Kvyat, before let's move our way up the up or down before we get back to the top. I guess. Jeez. Kvyat. Uh, he had the fastest lap. He had the F fastest. Toro Rosso's first fastest lap. Yeah. Amazing. So good for him. And But he also said uh, a little bit bitterly after the race that he said, I could have won that race for Red Bull. No, that's he said, I could have won that race for Red Bull. Come on. Not, I don't know. Could have taken on another Ferrari, <laughs> too, while you're at it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, there's been talk about this might be his last year. His yes. seat might be up for grabs, yes. blah, blah. But now there's rumors that there's the seat is locked down for him for at least maybe one more year. And there was a quote, some, uh, uh, I wish I had the source now. I lost, I accidentally closed the tab and I lost the source, but Kimi Räikkönen said that Arriva Bene is the best boss in the world. Or oh something yeah. Like that. He said, he, this guy is the best boss in the world where he's about or, to, or, no, no, he's, he, no, he, he said something like, it's, it's the best boss he's had. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. The best boss that he's ever had. <laughs> Whereas, Ari Bene is about to get replaced by James well, Allison. For that people is, that, don't know. That is the is talk. The, this is the other speculation. Yeah. So, but the two tie together, you know. You know, Raikkonen's got Ari Bene's back. Uh, Maybe Ari Bene's like, you know, you, you have my back. You put out some some good news for me. Help me keep my job, and I'll help you <laughs> keep your seat next year. Ari <laughs> Bene kind of looks like he should be in a uh, cigarette commercial <laughs> yeah right. he is he is in a cigarette commercial yeah he's, he's what he's doing he, he used to be so a Marlboro's. cigarette commercial that's the <laughs> i that's the thing about this i don't know if you're joking or not no 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 no, no. no. He, he's a he's a philip morris guy we, we've talked about this uh before if, oh my god and actually ted, ted do you remember remember last week we watched the ted's notebook yeah. and uh ted had like a few of his pages like flew out of his notebook and got stuck in his umbrella and all that oh yeah on that, that notebook that brilliant broadcast yeah. that one he, he went up and he was talking he's like so he, here's uh ferrari's smoking tent ferrari has in their f1 agreement that at every track they can put up no this, it's, it's not their agreement they just do it they just, well, yeah they have because they bring tent. more cargo for every race by that any other team like by a lot by far mm. yeah yeah and they, part of that is like they carry this little smoking booth. It's a tent that they the team smokes in because they're it's, it's <laughs> a Ferrari the smoking booth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna ask these Italians to stop smoking? Get out of here! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna leave the sport. Yeah, <laughs> but they have they have a tent that they set up in the back of the paddock and, and they, carry around they the world. Smoking. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that tent stinks. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's this color. It's a it's a red red and white tent. Red tent. Okay. Yeah, with the frag. It's, it's yeah. But you know you got you gotta love him for for sticking to their guns like. And <laughs> and you wonder like so Ferrari I don't I don't know this for sure obviously but Ferrari threw on the white elements for their classic livery this year on the yeah. car. Those were cigarette. Those are from the cigarette days. No. What, it, More or less. What, it, okay, it, it, here's it, the thing it, with those it, 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 that a lot of people don't don't uh, uh, don't realize. All, all all of the sponsorship space, like for stickers on the Ferrari car, like that that the the the, the advertising space on the Ferrari car, the stickers, those that space is owned actually. It's or it's contracted out by uh, to Philip Morris to Philip Morris to Marlboro. It, Oh wow! To Marlboro cigarettes because that's, that's they used to saying. be so the, they used to be new, Ferrari's big sponsor. Their new in quotes um, classic livery that they brought this year with the white could yeah, be they, from Philip no, Morris being like subliminally like no that's what they the always red, do the red and white pack there's, of our cigarettes. There's no mystery. It looks like a box of cigarettes. Dude, like there's that. no mystery to that. They yeah. do that every single year. That's why their logo is like kind of like shaped like that, so it looks kind of it yeah. a kind of could remind you at speed could remind you. Of um, it's just, of I'm, just, I'm just throwing you know, that Marlboro is not allowed. But, well, yeah. cigarettes are not cigarette advertising is banned in Formula One. Yeah, but yeah. somehow Most a sports. cigarette company Almost owns the advertising space around the Ferrari. Yeah, it's which, which is weird. So I guess all these companies that have stickers 
on the on the actual Ferrari car, like they actually have to pay Philip Morris Basically, for it. Yeah. It's so it's so it's so weird how that relationship you know, it's, works. It's you know what's really funny is that yeah. I when I think of Ferrari, I still think of Marlboro. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I still do. Exactly. Yeah, especially that's what that that's what that white canopy around the driver and everything. It's yeah, for. It's, yeah. Well, yeah. Like a box of cigarettes yeah. when they, that they're driving. Exactly. Um, but yes, uh, <laughs> Mauricio Rivabene, he's been like up and down the F1 paddock for a number of years, but it and usually in Ferrari gear. But what he was was. Um, the vice president of um, Philip Morris Europe or Philip Morris Italy or something like that. Oh, wow. And because Philip Morris has a big stake in Ferrari, uh, he was like kind of like the – he was Marlboro's <coughs> F1 guy and basically dedicated like full-time to working with Ferrari. Wow. And that's, that's – eventually that's, that's how he made it into the team. He was un- – before being um, team principal of Ferrari, he was from – he was still at Philip Morris. <laughs> blows my mind. Yeah, blows my mind. I guess if if you Obviously work, still smoking cigarettes. I, I guess if you work for long Stop. enough, at Phyllis Morris, you yourself start to look like a cigarette. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, the Mar- the Marlboro. He's the track, human guys. Marlboro man. <laughs> it was a bit of a sidetrack. Sorry. <laughs> I think it was a worthwhile sidetrack. Because yeah. now I know. Yeah. There you go. Now everyone knows. <laughs> work for a cigarette company. Join an F one team. <laughs> This, that's how ridiculous it is to get into F1. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who's obviously never smoked any cigarettes, Max Verstappen. Oh yeah, let's. It's is it time to start getting uh, into, otherwise he'd have some into hair on his chest by now. <laughs> well, that's that's the, that's so the, the the big news, right? Do you know how my okay? My girlfriend found out about this and like almost spoiled the race result for me. Oh yeah, through a freaking fashion a blog. Fashion blog. That... Like, she showed me like I scrolled down the page. There was just like picture of like dresses and and like little shoes and whatever. And all of a sudden, like at like the newest post had been the news that Max Verstappen won um, the 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 Grand Prix. Oh my god! And, and really, no, no, it, it's like it was popping up in concerts in the Netherlands. The news, <laughs> the Dutch news are going wild. The, the, um, there's a newspaper that's calling him the Lionel Messi of Formula One. Oh my god! And, and I don't know if you guys like follow soccer. I mean, I don't follow soccer at all. Like, yeah. no. but I know who I know that Lionel Messi is like a soccer guy. Yeah, I know that he's like one of like he's being compared to being like one of like the greatest in history, like up there with Maradona and Pelé or something wow. like that, uh, which is a big deal. It's like calling like anybody Gretzky. It's like so. You just don't throw that name around yeah, so lightly. <laughs> exactly. So basically, yeah, imagine that. Imagine that as yeah. if the Dutch media was saying Max Verstappen is basically Gretzky. <laughs> yeah, the new Gretzky. Wow. It's, it's, the new, it's the Gretzky of Formula One. <laughs> the superlatives abound. And we're definitely going to start getting a bunch of new F1 followers. If you're a new F1 follower right now and you're listening still. Welcome again. Pull up, pull up a couple of these Verstappen links here. Yeah. Let's, look, let's look through them. The papers, it's crazy. The, somebody posted a, yeah, this. Here's a picture of him in his motorhome, I guess, uh, staring at his trophies. He's got his first bottle of alcohol in front of him. <laughs> Chandon, look at this. All the Dutch newspapers with his face in the front. He's got a pile of them there. All yeah. the articles of himself. He's got full pages on one, two, Whoa. three, four, five, six, seven you don't of know. them, full front pages. This was posted by Max Verstappen? Uh, I don't know who Probably posted not. that. I don't know who posted those. <laughs> but oh, look I've, at I found look those at uh, just a link online. Look at look at look at <laughs> that's uh, like oh my god, Max for seven. There he goes. <laughs> the uh, the newspapers were posted by Martin Mueller. There you go, Martin Gamer on Twitter. If you want to check him out. So, so listen, a big fan. <laughs> yeah, there's a picture of Max Verstappen in the about two, 2000, 2001 with Michael Schumacher when he is three or four years old. Not Schumacher, Verstappen. Yeah, no, I was Look confused. at him, man. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. Ra- Raikkonen in the, uh, in the post race in his interview, he's like, you know, he's like, congrats to him. You know, obviously, like, he won the race, fair and mm. square, whatever. And he's like, you know, what's crazy, though, is I raced... In Formula One against his father. He's oh, like, that's my crazy. God. <laughs> and then he, he actually laughed. <laughs> Kimi Reckoning <and> laughed. No. <laughs> I couldn't find a video clip of it. Wow. But... <laughs> oh, not like we could put it up. Like, yeah, it's not like we could show it. These Take yeah. it down right away. dicks Jesus. would pull us. <laughs> but he raced against this guy's father and then his son. And don't forget what I said last week. 
Max Verstappen's dad in 1998 took over the seat of Kevin Magnussen's dad in the Stewart F1 team. Which, which is today Which the became Red Bull. Jaguar, which became, in 2005, Red Bull, which is now his son's seat. 18 <laughs> years later, the year he was born, yeah. <laughs> Joss Verstappen took the seat of K-Mag's dad in the team where his son now sits. And his work is done. It's pretty... Yeah, yeah. His father's work is done. He's like, I think he said something about stepping back from his management, and uh... they were pointing it out all weekend uh, <laughs> on the Sky coverage. How yeah. uh, for basically what else can he do since for his kid? well, but since uh, Max got no, to F one, kick everyone's ass on all throughout track. his career in like Formula Three or whatever. Max was very active, very or sorry, uh, Jos was very active, very involved. He was always at the races. He was always like sitting at the back. But this weekend, he was just yeah, he was just chilling. Like he wasn't like. like yeah, he was just he, he wasn't a, he wasn't the chilling standard. at the at the Red Bull like uh, in in the garage. No, he was just watching the race like somewhere else. It's the new standard because Ham Lewis Hamilton's dad he was hanging out every week till he was like yeah. twenty seven, twenty eight. No, you I know what I mean? Like yeah, an extra but, decade. Yeah, but that's not that's that, Lewis Hamilton's dad wanted to keep hanging around. Yeah, Lewis, was, Lewis was, basically like fired his dad. <laughs> This was Yo, probably yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> Jaws brother was like yeah, like you said, like he was just like all right, my job here is done. All right, let's just. Well, sit I'm back. sure. I'm sure he'll still be around. He's oh, got yeah. friends there. Oh yeah, yeah. But, racing, but, but he won't be like intense. What else, yeah, what else can he do? His yeah. son's got to talk on the track now. <laughs> He's got the best <laughs> opportunity in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And Renault's coming with a huge upgrade next week. It looks like they're pushing for next week instead of Canada even. Yeah. Extra extra week early. That's it. Wake but up. but don't That's forget it. that every time that a team introduces something like that. Like, there's always the chance that it might blow up. Mm -hmm. It requires a lot more pressure. It's 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 a system that's gonna put really test the engine. Obviously, they wouldn't have they like Renault has very competent engineers, I'm sure, and 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 a competent dyno where they would have tested this uh, uh, their engine a long time before even bringing mm -hmm. it to the track. They're not gonna bring it just cause. Yeah. But there's always like there's unpredictable stuff that could happen in the race. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But. Right, we'll, we'll get into it in a little bit, but testing is today. Mid-season testing yes. is today, and based on this morning's results already, Red Bull is saying, yeah, Renault, we want this engine Sweet. next week already. So we'll, we'll see. One, one more thing, for, though. Wait, do, you, do you got more Max? A little more, yeah. Okay, go, go. I was going to say, I think Red Bull Red Bull really loves to make records, mm -hmm. even outside of F1. They, oh, I like where this like, is going. You know what I mean? Like yes. Red Bull is looking for, they did the skydive from space. <laughs> They've been trying to go like deepest in the ocean, the yeah. biggest backflip yeah. on a motorcycle. Sell like, the most bull testicles. Yeah. Who, can, <laughs> who can who can ride a tricycle the fastest on a backflip through fire? Like yeah, all, yeah. Whatever, all this all kinds of crazy shit, right? <laughs> this weekend they broke a lot of records though. So Rick, Ricardo was kind of complaining, yeah. not kind of low key a bit after the race, but he said that the team put him on a three stop strategy and he's not sure why and he was a bit upset and. Vettel and Ferrari said the same I was, thing. He, I, say, he, I was he saying that a two stopper. I was right. saying that at Betty's man. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you they, knew you had it in the bag, if you threw some numbers, yeah. like like you could you could you could imagine somebody like um, uh, Christian Horner getting on the radio as soon as the opportunity became available. He went like just immediately got got back in touch with somebody at Milton Keynes. Uh, you know, because, like, they're always, like, in contact with the main factory and, like, with their big computers. Say, yo, run me a simulation right now. Like, uh, somewhere, like, uh, probably around the 32nd, 33rd lap. Run me a simulation right now. Can we get this kid to win? How, like, how can we do it? What's the best strategy? How can we do it? Should we look into it? And then somebody, like, somebody got back after, like, 20 minutes of, like, you know, throwing some charts and measuring and doing some statistics saying, yes, if we do this and this and that, we got it in the back. We can get we can get the newest record. And of course you want that. Yeah. If there was an yeah. opportunity to go and get yeah. that, there's, it would be silly from a commercial standpoint. You have to know that teams, team principles, his job, the job of Red Bull. Uh, racing is to sell, sell pop to sell cans. Let's that not forget. Sprayed all over your back this morning. Know, fucking <laughs> Red Bull, Red Bull. You need to invest in better cans. But the metallic strawberry smell. Uh, yeah, it, it, honestly, like it. That's their job. If they knew that they could get that that record there on the book, and you know it's a record that's gonna be very hard to break with the oh, way the re yeah. the way the regulations. The new stands. super license records. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, rules. Yeah, That's because it. nobody. Yeah, you can't even get a super license until you're 18. So he, Jesus Christ, you, like you have to like, 
He's 18 and 79 days or something, right? Yeah. Uh, He's 18, 18 and 220 so 18, something. Oh, 220 something? 220 something. He's yeah. almost 19? No. Well, well, he's two-thirds of the way there, I guess. Sure. I, but anyway. Um, flies, man. <laughs> uh, so you would take that. That record is going to be super hard to break unless like somebody comes like out of nowhere and wins on their first year of F1 with like a competent team. I don't know like how, how, how sure is that to happen. So anytime that anybody for, a, for the foreseeable future looks up youngest F1 race winner, it's Max Verstappen is going to appear there. And if you look him up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to say that he was driving for Red Bull. Mm. It's, it's, it only makes sense. If you're just looking at it, if you're not thinking yeah. um, it, on the sporting side, if you're just making a rational decision that makes sense commercially, what, like, you would do that. It, if it made sense to pursue that, you would do that. And Daniel Ricciardo should not be surprised. He knows who he's working for. Yeah. He knows who pays the bills. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And I don't know. It's, it's up to him. It's up to Ricciardo to prove he's the best on the team still anyways. Exactly. What so he why? did, he kind of did with qualifying. He's at least like super quick that he's not, that he's not getting his feathers ruffled. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'd say that this race proved that Max Verstappen is like better in every single way than Danny Ricciardo because they were in, 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 in such different strategies. Now this, the strategy was weird also because Vettel did the same thing as Ricciardo with the, <laughs> with the tires. Like they, I guess the, the undercut or whatever it is that they were trying to do didn't work where it was a huge mis miscalculation. Uh, guys, well, it seems like we're having some technical difficulties. Are we live or can we? Oh, wow, well, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Fucking bullshit. Sorry. Sorry about my vocabulary. No, no, I'm fucking furious. <laughs> Sorry to, uh, to everybody, and uh, if you're still hanging around, thank you. We have somebody. Somebody said you're still alive. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're we're good. We're good. We just had a bit of an internet hiccup. Sorry, guys. Sorry, buddy. Uh, does everybody? Does anybody even remember what we were talking about? Hopefully, everyone likes workaholics. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about. Uh, we're back. We're going. We we're good. We're good. We're gonna I'm edit fresh. out that bullshit after. Uh, yeah. Right. So Red Bull likes records. Red Bull likes yes. to break records. They broke a few. Yes. This weekend. The first driver in the 90s to win a race, youngest driver to win a race, youngest yeah. driver to lead a race. Yes. First Dutchman to win a race. Right. First, du first Dutchman to lead a race. Yes. Uh, youngest person to win a race. First teenager to win a race. First teenager to lead a race. <laughs> <laughs> he's still a you teenager. Call those, yeah, he's still a teenager. Jeez. Although technically considered a man, I assume, by international law. Oh, of course, yeah. 18-year-old. <laughs> Max Verstappen. 18 year old, 220 something days. Max Verstappen. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Hey, I don't know if, if, if everybody missed this, but I was, what I was saying is listen, if you were tasked with getting the more advertising money out of your F1 investment, um, you would go for that. There's no, like, there wouldn't, I wouldn't even call it a conspiracy. I would call that, like, yeah, it's, I, if somebody told me, like, like if in 20 years, like, some, somebody's memoir came out and said, yes, we actually, like, did like rig the the Spanish Grand Prix and uh, to stack the odds in Max's favor? I I I would be like, of course uh, you did. Of course they yeah. did. <laughs> have to wait twenty years for that. Yeah, but yeah, it's it, you would do it's that if you were thinking hours. pure it's, commercial it's a fact. Sense. Yeah, a beer commercial. Pure. <laughs> oh, no. In pure commercial sense, that would make like, yeah, that would, that would be <laughs> the the clear strategy. There's no there's no surprises there. No, there's there's no surprises. Listen, without. listen though. But one thing that I, I I hope that it doesn't come across that way, I'm not taking away anything from Max's victory. Like that was an impressive, impressive display. Mm -hmm. um, Throw up the came face. Oh, also, sorry. also from the same page. <laughs> 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 it's not actually dirty though. Yeah, no, that's it's the best. 
I think he oh, yeah, Verstappen, he, he had the Verstappen best killed it. the best reaction when spraying. Too bad he didn't get to experience real champagne on the podium. Let's let's not forget that that thing that they that he's spraying there is not champagne. It's Chandon. It's Chandon, <laughs> which is uh, sparkling wine from America. Um, so. <laughs> So yeah, there, there he goes. How pleased is he? Jesus Christ! Can you imagine? And I think that's 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 what's making it such a like such a story, right? Like so, it's 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 really easy to get carried away. I th I think, mm -hmm. and again, not that there's absolutely no reason to to not get carried away. There's he, his successes, and you know, if you look at that picture of like what he was doing in 2013, then 2014, then 2015, uh, then then this year. He started from, like he three years ago. He was racing like carts, like little like like carts, man. Yeah. And <laughs> and and now he's he's a he's a Formula One race winner. It's it's unbelievable. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a great story. It's a it, 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 I'm still buzzing from watching that that Grand Prix, and I'm su I'm sure like half of the Formula One world is still uh, in shock. There's a lot of races this year though, where it's gonna be illegal for him to spray this Chandon. Oh yeah, like let's yeah let's. Let's let's see what's gonna happen. AT, in, I guess in, uh, the drinking age in the in US Spain Grand Prix. is eighteen. Are they just cool about giving your kids a little? I think it's giving 18, your yeah. kids a little drunk. They, I, th I think they are too. Yeah. <laughs> eighteen. Yeah. Montreal is eighteen. Yeah. So Canada will be fine. You'll be fine in Canada. Monaco probably eighteen. Yeah. They still run on. Uh, I'm, I'm sure all. I think all, all, all a, of Europe. They still have uh, like a royal family. So yeah probably 18 do whatever the fuck you want it's probably even it's less than that like in some european countries it's probably like, like 16 okay, with, like with 16 parents 16 or 17 yeah. yeah i know even oceanic laws like that i went on a cruise a few months at the yeah. podcast i missed yeah. on the ship if i think if you were 16 and you had a signed parental consent you could drink as much as you want and that boat is uh is from because uh norway right it's a Norwe yeah. norwegian boat yeah probably registered to europe i'm not sure it's, it was norwegian cruise line that i went on yeah i think that their their port is probably like it's Cope or probably some, it, oslo or something yeah, yes somewhere in europe yeah. but i think they're once you're out at sea though you're just in internet you're just at maritime yeah. law right yeah, you just sweet. drink whenever whatever do whatever yeah. you want yeah. um <laughs> I, very impressive and i and I, but, and I was i was listening to uh peter windsor's um thing uh, his, his youtube channel he put out a video and he was like you know, freaking, this is historic, and it is. It, of course, it is historic. It's the youngest. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is historic, but he was like, "Oh, it's a historic moment." Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the the BBC podcast, uh, Checker Flag. They were like, "Oh my God, this is you know where," and I couldn't help but feel that. It, yes, it's granted for sure, and and, and there was, it's emotional. There's, it's good for F one, good for the show, good for everything. Like, I really love that this happened. But I feel like you have to be careful not to be not to get carried away too much, right? Um, with this, and um, Mike, do you want to like load that uh, that crazy the young the youngest uh, Grand Prix drivers? Because so I, I started and thinking about drive? it's it's on their book. Yeah, just, just before you do, let me let me throw this in quick because this just came out I think yesterday or the day before, oh, mm -hmm. five days ago. Red Bull mm -hmm. just snapped up for their young driver team a man named. Or a, a boy, a boy named Richard Vershoor mm -hmm. to their junior team. And they picked him up uh, from one of the junior races at Russia. Mm -hmm. He was racing in Formula 4. And uh, he's also Dutch, I believe. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, they're, they're getting prepared for, for, for the huge influx of, of interest from, uh, from the Netherlands and Nordic countries. I'm, I'm sure of it. And... It's great. It's a, it's a great story to, to hear. I don't know if uh, if you guys if any if anybody's on Reddit. One of the things that somebody posted recently was this Dutch commentator basically losing it and like just having a very emotional time yeah. um, over the last lap, uh, just watching my commentating on Max Verstappen and it was like I, I don't know Dutch at all and like his emotion really like it it, it moved came you. Yeah, yeah, it really yeah. came through. It moved you. Um, and apparently this guy actually he's been like really like plucking along like just really 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 pushing for f1 uh in the netherlands for a very long just time for sure uh, richard for sure is who you're talking about no 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 the, the commentator the dutch oh, commentator. The commentator yeah the commentator like had been like just Sorry. really for years like really following the sport sometimes like 
um not even actually like they didn't even have enough budget to send him to the races but he'd still like keep commentating like just from the feed at, at his studio stuff like that it's so cool this guy just like plowed through like all the dark times in in the netherlands and like now like he's 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 the netherlands like f1 guy so like he's been rewarded so it's it's, it's a cool story for that definitely that they're, they're um uh, there's it's gonna open a lot of like commercial possibilities there's gonna be definitely more money put into f1 and a lot more attention their coverage is gonna improve as a consequence of that there's no way it it, mm -hmm. it, it won't so it's it's a great it's a great news for for dutch fans um of the sport if anybody's from the netherlands here listening uh max is in sixth it's place great... in the championship too yeah right behind wow. <laughs> right behind Ricciardo. Yeah, but there's all the other other shit crazy. going on with the points now even like Kimi Raikkonen being ahead of uh um of, 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 Hamilton. of Hamilton for example yes. oh, yeah. four or five points ahead, four <clears throat> points ahead. Yeah. yeah crazy but but again I think it's great and it's and it's great for F1 but pull it up it's it's in the book here in the in the, sh in the book it show. Called? it's called uh it? I can't actually sorry but uh it's called <laughs> uh youngest Grand Prix winner youngest GP winners oh okay yeah and if I could borrow your keyboard here, <laughs> and and this is just something something a little that I just wanted to uh, to share with you guys. If you wanna full screen it, Hold on, let me just make sure. I... Yeah, we're good. yeah, we're good. Yeah. Okay, so this is just uh, oh something I put together here. It's the top ten youngest Grand Prix winners, and I plotted uh, the age uh, that they uh, that they won their first Grand Prix. Uh, mm -hmm. against the year when it happened here um but ignore like the that red line over there for now um but what's going on here is a distribution from 10 all the way up to first first uh of course but let, let, let's go through the list though to see like what this brings so l starting from the oldest in that list of top 10 let's go right now a bit of a zoom in so you can see it a little better there it is from 17 to 5 and from the beginning of the championship even uh till now and we go to number 10 and the 10th youngest one in f1 was michael schumacher 23 years 240 days in the 1992 belgian grand prix look at him there how young oh, does wow. he look like just in that uh in that benetton that that was basically what started the michael schumacher euphoria in germany so now moving to the next in the list, number nine, um, from J Belgium, Jackie X. Back in the day, in the 1968 French Grand Prix, full water, as, as was Michael Schumacher's first victory, it was a wet rain. Where, and everybody knows that Michael Schumacher like, was known as like, a, being a, a bit of an expert. He made a difference in the rain he, uh, as, as a young driver, taking mm -hmm. the risks, putting the car where you had to. Jackie X, for that time, over for this era in the Formula One, 23 years, 188 days in 1968 in a very, very wet track of Rouen. Look at that. There mm -hmm. he is thrashing the Ferrari around <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 he, and he had his victory. And then he moved on to have a pretty successful career uh, in sportsman. I think he won Le Mans. He never won a an F1 championship, but he was, he was, a, he was good. Mm. Uh, like, like Kimi Raikkonen, good, I'd say. Okay. Um, uh, Jackie X again made history. Number eight now, further down our, our list, a name that I'm that you're only vaguely familiar with now, Robert Kubica. He was like he was around in F1 a little while ago. Uh, he won in the 2008 Canadian Grand Prix. I believe there was, it, it was another bit of a wet race. <laughs> um, Didn't he also almost die there? Uh, no, actually, he had a big crash yeah. um, a bit later on that kind of yeah. ruined his well, career. Well, not the same year, but... Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah late, later in his career. Yeah, I mean, now... I remember that. Number seven. Kimi Raikkonen. Oh, wow. Look at a young Kimi. Back when he used to smile. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> 23 years, 157 days. He won the, the 2003 Malaysian Grand Prix driving for a McLaren. Back in the days of people... Like, this is the era that people remember Raikkonen in, in, in like his full glory. They, some say right. that Raikkonen has never been as fast as he was here. Or as uh, much of a competent driver. Um, going to number six now. Who else but my champion, our champion, <laughs> at 22, 22 years, 154 days, the in the 2007, 
at the 2007 Canadian Grand Prix, look at him being double teamed in Champagne there. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why a lot of people say that he loves coming to Canada. It's because because he had his first his, his first victory there. Wow. It's, it's, he's very emotional about Canada. He actually definitely does uh, like to come to Montreal mm -hmm. to race. Oh, one of the colonies. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> now to number five. Uh, you can tell by the color blue. These are older guys. So Bruce McLaren. Oh, wow. The Bruce McLaren at 22 years. In 1959, he was very young. He was a, a very young from New Zealand. He went to Britain. He s eventually started his team that is the McLaren team today. He had some success. Number four. <laughs> this one is the one that I'm not, I'm not so sure. This is a guy called Troy Rutman um, that he won the 1952 Indiana Indianapolis 500. He mostly raced in America. He only took part in f1 races like maybe like two or three f1 races mm -hmm. or something like that but he won the indy 500 and the indy 500 and that in those days was cons counted as for points for the f1 world championship oh, but wow. but hardly anybody like any of the Euro european teams bothered uh going, going to indianapolis okay. like sometimes not even ferrari showed up <laughs> anyway but now we're going back we're going down to like the little numbers. So number three, number three in this youngest list, who else but El Nano, right there. And there he is. In 2003, in the Hungarian Grand Prix, 22 years, 26 days. Get it, we're, getting, we're getting closer. And there he goes. And then the previous record keeper, of course, was Sebastian Vettel. The first appearance of Il Dito. <laughs> <laughs> there he is in his Toro Rosso uniform. It was he wasn't yeah. racing for Red Bull. He was a Toro Rosso guy. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in Italy, another wet race. Mm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And then, of course, down to number one, we have Max, the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Now, a couple of things that are that are interesting to note with this with this chart. I I sort of looked at it here, and like it's it, it's it's very easy to see that a pattern emerges, especially when you don't count these. Look at what happened these two years now, from the 70s to the 90s. There's 20 years that there was nothing really going on in terms of... No uh, children allowed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and this, uh, uh, curiously enough, this is, you know, when, when uh, um, Rush the movie, like the, the story happened here. Yeah. Gilles Villeneuve race here. These are, these are the golden days of F1 right um and, and they and were the golden days of exactly exactly <laughs> and and this is a reason why maybe uh, people like bernie and, and and the older statements uh, is the older statement of the sport are saying like you know we should go back to these days where there were no kids in the track whatever right you know <laughs> some <laughs> you know who's the get 17 the, year old the kids off the track <laughs> but but look yeah you can see there were and and these were like the, you know the hard days when the cars got ridiculous they first started to get like like really really crazy with the aerodynamics right. ground effects a lot of downforce you, you saw some amazing racing there but yeah. when we met with um with tim horeni remember he's he he said something like yeah, man those cars like the thing is that max verstappen as as much as his skill is as much as he has skill and every right to his seat and, and whatever he probably wouldn't have been able to head to like really manhandle the cars of this era <laughs> not to take anything away from him uh, but anyway just so I found it pretty interesting. That's, yeah, that's an interesting note. Um, of this, I wanted to say that definitely, like, these two guys, when they were youngest drivers that got a, a, a youngest, uh, you know, they're in the top 10 of youngest guys that, that won a Grand Prix, and then they went on to, like, have successful careers after. Him, I'm not so sure. I don't really want to count him because it was just the Indi yeah, right it, it was just Indianapolis. <laughs> but... You know, but these two though, when when looking at the big picture, you can count them as outliers, mm -hmm. right? Like they're way over here. You can see though that on this side, from the '90s onwards, it it does form a little bit of a pattern right. that these drivers that are completing, like that that are getting their that have been the youngest uh, to complete a Grand Prix, it's getting it's getting younger, it's getting younger as the time progresses, and it does seem to follow at least a bit of a pattern there's a trend line that i that i added there a very brusquely added there mm -hmm. in, in in light red uh, for our listeners uh this uh this presentation will be available if you want to check it out just the presentation uh it will be in the links in the commentary in the comments anyway but um 
Dr. Andrew Phillips of F1 Metrics would probably not approve of that trend line, but <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's, it, it does seem to fall apart. But and now let's go back again and, 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 and review these names. So again, that's we're talking about Schumacher, Kubica, Raikkonen, Hamilton, Alonso, Vettel, and Verstappen, mm -hmm. right? Out of this list, look at it right now. Most of, well, a few, quite, most of them are still in it. Well, are, are in F one except for Kubica and Michael Schumacher. Mm -hmm. um, but these guys, Michael Schumacher, multiple world champion, Raikkonen, world champion, Alonso double world, world champion hamilton triple, triple world champion wow. vettel quadruple. quadruple world champion we will never know we're gonna see a quintuple verstappen we will never I'm know saying? what kubica would have done and but kubica was one of those names that i remember like back before his accident so what happened is that he had a very promising f1 career ahead of him people were basically like making as much hype of him as people have been about hamilton uh, the, mm -hmm. There was a huge interest from Poland. He's, Pol he's, he's, he's Polish. But then uh, in the offseason or, or at one point, he actually went and raced a rally and oh. he got into a huge accident. Uh -oh. And after that, he couldn't recover and his uh -oh. career Fine. in F1 was doomed. So we will never know what Kubica could have achieved, but he was definitely in the path. And looking at this line, you can't help but see that Verstappen, he's, he's been doing the right things for sure. Uh, like he's, he, he, he's, yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely in line. It's, it's not... So he's 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 joined a very exclusive group that everybody pretty much, it's at least since the nineties, any any driver that did their first uh, or th that had the youngest Grand Prix victory went on to win a, ch a championship. Except for Kubica, but we'll never know. Right? Oh man! Right? So this it's is fantastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, though, I do have to say that looking at this, th th there is another thing that that I do want to point out, and it's that. That line there uh, that I just added right around. Oh, shit, Mike. Check out your camera. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because this green line represents an introduction. And now, and now this is where I get when I, when I start to get cynical. Because uh -oh. clearly there's a pattern there, yeah. right? <sighs> this, that green line from just before 1990 and just after 1990, the first couple of years, a couple of years before and a couple of years after, coincides with the introduction of two key things that we still have today in F1. The semi-automatic and automatic gearboxes with the flappy paddles mm -hmm. and power steering. Uh... Two key things that, in a way, moved it away from being this this era of the great gladiators that, right. that, that, that used to have to manhandle the car um, and, and, and gave room to the smooth drivers, to the guys that could finesse the corners in, right. in, 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 in a way. So I did find that very interesting. Um, and maybe, I mean, as, whereas for sure, nothing can be taken away from what, what, Verstappen, what Verstappen has done. Mm -hmm. it, it, we shouldn't honestly get carried away 100% by saying, you know what, this is a the next coming of Christ or any or anything like that. Right. It is, I think, in a way, um, a symptom of the times. Right. Um, a symptom of that. There, 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 that, there was definitely a, a, a change in the way that the requirements of you as a driver yeah, well, before. Good, good for him and all that, but I'm not going to start cheering for him. I'm not a fan all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> no, but. just I, I just want to like to to point that this definitely made me like just just to try to keep things in perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that mm -hmm. if with enough time, like maybe somebody will break that record, even if regulations get like that, because maybe that's what you need to win these days. And if you, if you look at it, cause what comes with youth, mm -hmm. right? With youth comes that feeling that you can pretty much get away with anything because you're not tied to anything, right? You got, you get, you got you got nothing to lose, so why not try it? Why not go for for that gap? Why not um, engage in the you know have that youthful impetus? And if the car is maybe less physical to drive, then the skills that like will make you the winner, given the right car, is that is you know, on top of like you know you start with the with a basis of talent and of good racecraft and all that and all the things that you learn through karting, but 
the the last step would be to having to have that 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 enthusiasm that that energy and that right. not giving a fuck to go for the, for that gap and and and, yeah. and to not be stressed yeah. to not have things tying you down like family like kids like res other responsibilities right. life and, in general yeah li it, life doesn't get when life doesn't get in the way of your driving mm -hmm. and that's all you need to win grand prix and to be great is to not crack under pressure but it's probably a little bit easier to do that if you don't have a kid mm. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um then it only makes sense that it's a young man's game now mm. that that's just what f1 is these days yeah. but you would I, I would say you would want that but but from uh, from uh getting fans into a sport do you want do you, whether you want it or not really then it it all becomes to like the question of the age right now it all goes back to it what is formula 1 what is the pinnacle of motorsports mm -hmm. because if you there are there are technical innovations that get that get added to the cars and and in a way for F1 to be the pinnacle of motorsports, to, 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 to be able to even you even have a realistic claim to that title, mm -hmm. it has to be it has to move with the technology. It has to be the most technologically advanced um, motorsport. That is right. just what it has to do yeah. because of the development of road cars around you and speed or, or technology makes you faster in many ways, mm -hmm. right? Um, and cars technology to begin with. Anyways, exactly. The car is technology. Exactly. Right. Um, so, so the, the, the two things go hand in hand. Now, there's there's technology that gets added to these F1 cars now for many many things. It's, there's technology uh, in terms of uh, aerodynamics. There's all kinds. Of, everything is yeah, braking anything. Mm -hmm. But if we look at these um, advancements, like the uh, power steering and uh, and, and the flappy battles, like you could, you could say that like these were things that are things that are added to a car to make it more manageable at higher speeds mm -hmm. in a way, right? right? Things also like ABS, mm -hmm. like traction control, that kind of stuff. There's innovations, there's technology that gets introduced into the sport to make it easier for a driver to drive at speed, to, to be easier for a driver to be able to control yeah. at, at, at high speeds. A lot of those get banned because you have to thread a very fine line in between what is like acceptable technology and what is driver aid. All right. Somehow, well, if for some reason, somebody has drawn a line, rightfully some, I'm sure there's like very credible reasons that uh, things like the flappy paddle gearbox and uh, power steering and power steering are not driver aids. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're just technologies there to like help the guys go faster. But then this goes back to, um, to what I had said before, a couple episodes ago. Listen, if you're gonna if you're gonna be okay with like some of these technologies uh, that I'll, that do legitimately allow a driver make their drive make their driving easier, make it easier for them to control the car mm -hmm. um, under those speeds, then that should go hand in hand with allowing them to to race at higher speeds as well. I think that the grooves in the tires in 2004 maybe shouldn't have been introduced uh, to, to slow the cars down. All, all these rules to, like, to, to slow the car down that got introduced for safety, mm -hmm. just to slow the cars down, should never have been introduced. And if they weren't, I feel like maybe we, wouldn't, we would see different names here in this, in, in, in this chart here. And maybe, right. maybe it wouldn't look so regular after the 90s because once the speed goes fast go, goes higher there's other challenges that come into play mm -hmm. that's not just of like do you have enough balls do you care about nothing enough to like go for that right. gap right. right then your racecraft and like really like your your ability like to see things before they happen mm -hmm. uh that 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 is uh, more important really um so anyway i, I just can't help but feel that if perhaps with the advancement in technology that allows the driver to to drive better under speed they would have like just added a bit more speed to the car right. so we, right. we we probably would have seen more of like maybe what people uh, want. I don't now, know now wh where did bernie come in he came in like in this era okay yeah, yeah. so he was part of these decisions then to yes to, to change all the cars and... yes but uh 
the FIA also like had a had a higher role and the teams. Ah, okay. And but yes, this was this this all uh, some of these uh, developments definitely would have been deemed acceptable at one point or another by Mister E. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's uh, and any thoughts? You're done talking about Vettel. I mean, Verstappen. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. The young, the young guys. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I got nothing else about that. What a good-looking graph that is, eh? That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Incredible. Yeah, you can uh, take it out. Do you guys want to take a little break and then come back? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll be back. We had some testing, tear-offs, and some other odd stories from this past weekend. Cool. See you guys in a bit. Yeah.